Potemkin, and this is Showtime on Phantom, where we bring in you to the center of the Dallas sports discussion. So uh, we're going to get this thing rolling right now. Um, as you can see, I'm joined by Tom Landry um, because, well, that's what my opening rant is on, as you can see below me here. Um, plus, the main topic for today, why this is the most important Dallas Cowboys offseason in a decade, which we will get into here uh, momentarily. Um, and then also, should the Mavericks be trading Dennis Smith Jr.? Another topic I wanted to discuss today. Um, so again, uh, I am Ari Temkin, a part of um, the Cowboys pre- and post-game show and a part of 105.3 The Fan locally here in Dallas, uh, which is it's the best sports talk station in Dallas. You turn it on and leave it on station, 105.3 The Fan. Um, we are brought to you by Pollo Campero. Uh, make plans to join me at Pollo Campero on Tuesday in Arlington. I'll be broadcasting Showtime live from Pollo Campero. And uh, come by and you can register to win a $100 gift card to the Dallas Cowboys Pro Shop. So you want to get $100 bucks there, got a jersey. Uh, join me at the Pollo Campero in Arlington um, on, uh, on Tuesday, uh, which is a week from yesterday. Whatever that date is. Um, all right, hit the share button if you have not yet already. Um, I'm going to do that right now. So, uh, we're gonna get this Sam Torres says PSA 35 in Austin sucks. It does. Uh, th- Austin is, from an infrastructure standpoint, an abomination. There's really no other way to put it. Um, they have horribly messed up Austin, Texas through their infrastructure. And I know Chris Bennett can agree with me there. Um, Sam, do you live in Austin or are you just passing through or what? But yeah, 35 in Austin is a disaster. Um, and it's only getting worse and worse as the city grows and more people move. And it's just, it's, it's awful. Um, Cody Arnold says, I talked to Jimmy Johnson yesterday and he's not coming back. It's good to know. Um, I, I haven't talked to Jimmy Johnson, so I didn't, I didn't know that for sure, but that's, uh, that's good to know. Um, Danny Easley says, it's Luca's team now, bro. I would like to get Bradley Beal for him or Victor Oladipo with a conditional pick. I'll tell you what I think the Cowboys um, should, or rather the Cowboys. I, I'll tell you what I think the Mavericks should be asking for, trying to get for Luca. But um, in a moment here, I'll get you to my opening rant, which is based on something that we heard Jerry Jones say. And um, it has a lot to do with this guy over here, who's, or I guess it's over here, who's one of the greatest coaches in the history of, not only the Dallas Cowboys, obviously, but of uh, um, of of football, one of the greatest coaches in the history of the NFL, um, and why it's kind of an egregious thing for Jerry Jones to say. But I mean, we shouldn't be surprised by that because he says egregious things all the time. Um, West Coast, what's up, Tyson, the West Coast Cowboy? How are you? Um, all right, broadcasting live across multiple pages and platforms. This is Showtime. Every day at noon central right here on Phantom, where we bring you to the center of the Dallas sports discussion. Again, if you have not yet already, go ahead and hit that share button, and then we'll get started uh, as soon as everybody joins and then hits that share button. Um, Okay, so uh, Jerry Jones was really, really good yesterday on 105.3 The Fan. Um, However, you know, he mentioned, he mentioned, you know, when talking about Jason Garrett as the head coach, he mentioned this guy, Tom Landry, right? And basically saying, like, Landry wouldn't have been able to come become Tom Landry if the Cowboys decide, decided to fire him right in the same area where the Cowboys could be firing Jason Garrett right now. Like, basically, like, Tom Landry didn't win a Super Bowl until his 10th year as the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys and didn't even win an NFC championship until his 9th year. So basically what Jerry is saying is, hey, have patience. Remember, if, if they had fired Landry at this point, they would have been firing him right before he went on a run to win Super Bowls, and a lot of them. So, I mean, that's, that's where we are with Jason Garrett, which is factually correct. That is a factually accurate statement to make. If the Cowboys fired Jason Garrett now, they'd be firing him right on the precipice of the time that Tom Landry won Super Bowls. Here's the difference. That was in 1970. The, 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 the amount, the rate of change in our society today 
it's incredible the technological advances that we're making on a year by year basis. Like it's it's not even comparable when comparing te like technologically the 70s with the modern era of the world. Like it, there's no comparison. The evolution of technology, the evolution of everything is happening so quickly, way quicker, like way quicker than it ever was in the 70s. Why am I bringing this up? Because NFL offenses and NFL schematics are no different. So yeah, maybe Jason Garrett in the 1970s, if he were a head coach then, he could take his downhill running style, pro style offense that uses inline tight ends and he can win championships with it. The problem is the inability for him to evolve his schemes to fit the current times. When we made our way through this season, I kind of went all the way to the other side and says, yeah, Jason Garrett's a good coach, keep him. But as we reflect upon why the Cowboys lost and why the Cowboys are not playing on Saturday or Sunday, it's it's probably important to note that that reason is is simply put as they don't they don't have a good enough passing offense and they don't have a good enough scoring offense. And this isn't a recent trend. This is this is like to compare the Cowboys and why they lost in 2014 and why they lost in 2016 and why they lost in 2018. Like the the difference in the NFL from 2016 to 2018 is vast. It's so big in terms of what passing offenses were doing in 2016 versus what passing offenses are doing in 2018. The passing offense of the Cowboys in 2018 would have been middle of the pack in 2016. It's bottom third in the NFL in 2018. That should tell you something, right? It was went from league average to basically well outside league average in two years. And John Dyer says Tom Landry was always evolving, brought back the shotgun and flex. And that's, by the way, yes, this isn't to say that Landry didn't evolve. It's simply to say that if you can't evolve enough in the modern era of the of the NFL, then you're 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 gonna die. Like evolve or die, and quickly evolve quickly or die quickly. But the Cowboys are just married to this idea that they're so close. They just have to keep that chemistry and that continuity and that you know that same group around. And that, that's what will allow them to grab them. Meanwhile, the Bears hired a coach and made the playoffs in a year. Meanwhile, the Eagles hired a new coach and, and won a Super Bowl in two years with that new coach. Sean McVay, year two. Like, what? Uh, this idea that you've got to have you've got to have this guy forever and the Cowboys are so close that they just stick it out with one more year, ramming their head against the wall with a stupid Jason Garrett offense that isn't about scoring lots of points really quickly. It's about being adverse to making mistakes we're going to see the same thing happen again. Daniel Meza, why didn't he compare Jason Garrett to Jimmy Johnson? Didn't fit his narrative. Right. Right. He could have said the same thing about John Wooden. You can make literally the exact same argument about the great UCLA coach, John Wooden. Because John Wooden didn't win anything until he was like, had been at UCLA for 10, 11, 12 years. Well, you know what? The world is different now. And we, we not like, it's not even just that, like the idea of though things are happening quicker. And because of that, you should change coaches. Like I know a lot of people are like, Hey, I'd like the way the old style was. It was better to have, you know, coaches for a longer period of time. The difference being in, in, in the last 20 years, if you've had a coach for more than like seven years that hasn't won a Super Bowl, they're not going to win a Super Bowl. That's, that's what it tells us. So maybe in the seventies that worked because we saw coaches routinely that would be there for 9, 10, 11 years and not win anything and then finally win after years. But in like the last 20 years, you know, in the modern world, that doesn't happen anymore. You know, I, I keep hearing out of, out of Cowboys media, you know, just give it one more chance. Just one. They're so close. Like I have an unbelievable amount of respect for Brian Broaddus. I think Brian Broaddus is so good at what he does. And I love Brian Broaddus as a person. Good dude. I know him. Really good guy. But he's, he's peddling this just one more year, give it another try. And it's like, we already know what, what this is. I don't have the confidence. I don't have the confidence in Jason Garrett to have a productive enough scoring offense or passing offense for this thing to work in 2019. It's something I've been saying the entire week. So the idea that you stay with the status quo for the sake of not changing, as opposed to change for the sake of change... I need change because I need somebody that's more forward thinking to understand that this isn't how you win in the modern era of the NFL.
John Greest, new offensive coordinator, that's what the Cowboys need. It's not, though. That's the problem here is we're pinning it all on Linehan, and so much of this is Garrett's offense. That's the important distinction here. I keep bringing this up. Linehan was a pass-first guy before he got to Dallas. When Linehan came to Dallas, the worry was he passes too much. He's like a 70% passing coordinator. So the Cowboys turned him into more of a rushing first coordinator. Jordan Goldschmidt says, preach Obama, change. <laughs> Sean Moore, Landry was innovative, Garrett isn't. Also, there's that. Also, Tom Landry was a really good coach for a hundred other reasons. Like the idea, and I know it sounds really stupid to hear Jason Garrett say, or rather Jerry Jones say it, but I just can't allow him to say something that stupid and not have it be like, yeah, yeah, Tom Landry and Jason Garrett are different coaches for like literally a hundred reasons. So basically what you're saying is, well, I mean, if they had gotten rid of Landry at year eight or year nine, like, like we're at with Garrett, they would have never won all those Super Bowls. Yeah, but like first and foremost, it's a completely different era where the, the rate of change wasn't happening that quickly. Like, again, the parallel here is the unbelievable amount of technological advances that we're making in the world in such a fast rate of time. I can't remember what the exact metric is, but like in, in 2004, there was this, this, like there were more technological advances made in that year than the previous like 70 or whatever it was. And then in 2005, there were even more. And then, in, so it's like every year there's a higher rate of change in, far, in terms of technological advances that are being made. The NFL is also very similar. The, the rate of change is happening quickly. Try to compare this team to how it was trying to win in 2016. And then you look at the passing numbers, where the passing numbers were for the Cowboys were average in that year, league average, but this year would have but this year bottom third? Like the same you take the Cowboys passing numbers this year, and then you apply them what they were what in 2016, and they would have been league average. The Cowboys passing numbers in 2016 this year, two years ago, would have been league average. And this year, it's bottom third. That's how quickly it's changing. In two years, the same numbers went from league average to bottom third. That's why they need a change. Because you have to look and ask yourself, do they have the coaching staff to evolve with the times? It's like the Golden State Warriors three-point shooting in the NBA. The Cowboys are trying to be a... a they're trying to be a mid-range jump shooting team. <laughs> Chris Bennett, Landry's ghost is better than Garrett. Um, team TJ, why isn't it just TJ Carpenter? What's Team TJ? Uh, Eric Doxson, sounds like you're going to. Sounds like it's going to be a do or die season next year for Jason. But like, it isn't? Aren't we sick of like how many times do we get that? I. I feel like Jason Garrett has had a do or die season for like forever. And I, I made the case this year that this was the first year you really had to fire Garrett because he was so tied to Romo. You really weren't going to bring in a new coach because the whole allure of Romo and the skill set of Romo was he's your offensive coordinator. He's calling plays last scrimmage. So as long as Romo is here, you're never going to get rid of Garrett. Nor should you probably because you don't want to bring in a new coach that wants to then implement their own offense. Here's the thing. I kind of have gone back and forth on this. So it started off, and I was really impressed with a lot of the things I saw from Garrett in terms of aggression, you know, going forward on fourth down. So I kind of went all the way to the other side on Garrett and was like, yeah, he's he's done a pretty good job this year. He should get credit for this season. And, and so that sort of leads itself to this idea of, well, he shouldn't get fired, right? But now I'm asking myself the most important fundamental question, which is the Cowboys told us they could win playing this style, right? The idea of, we're just not an offense built to score a bunch of points. We're not going to score 30 points a game. Okay, well, that's the way they built their team. Which, again, going back to earlier this week, is the reason this season is not a success. Because they built their team to win with the, hey, we're, we're not going to score a bunch of points. That's not the offense we have. Oh, okay, cool. Let's see if that works. And it didn't work. It wasn't going to work. Like, that's... We can look, and I know, like... Well, they, they they gave up 273 yards rushing and they almost won the game. Yeah, yeah, but the ultimate point here is you're not going to win a Super Bowl in the modern era unless you have a team that is built to put up 30 points. That's the problem here. And I don't have, I do not have any confidence that Jason Garrett with Doug Nussmeyer or 
Jim Bob Cooter or literally any other, and that's a real offensive coordinator in case you guys are wondering, or literally any other offensive coordinator you could ever dream of them bringing in, that they're going to evolve enough to go away from that idea of, yeah, we're just not a really high scoring offense. <laughs> really? Not built to score points? That sounds ridiculous. It's literally a comment we heard from the locker room all this season. Eric Dotson, who do you have in mind to take over for Linehan? Who's available? I mean, I think what they're going to do is is Doug Nussmeyer, who is the tight ends coach, who's called plays at the collegiate level before. Like, I think they're going to elevate him to offensive coordinator. That's what I think they're going to do. And and I think we'll see more of what we've seen. Like, pinning the failures of this offense on Linehan fails to understand, gives you sort of a, a, a not a full grasp of the influence that Jason Garrett, Garrett has. John Tatum, Jimmy Johnson was the best coach the Cowboys ever had. I think Tom Landry was the best coach the Cowboys ever had. Because, as people mentioned, just, just how innovative he was. And by the way, the only, the only similarities between Tom Landry and Jason Garrett, well, that one is even keel, obviously, right? They're both even keel, all right? They're both Cowboys coaches, so that's two. Uh, they both have been given uh, at least nine years. There's three. Jeff Davison says, fire Jerry. I don't think that's going to happen. Sue O'Donnell, until the owner lets the coaches do the coaching, will never get there. He lets the coaches do the coaching. The problem is the, problem is the coaches doing the coaching at this point. Um, Tony Smith, McCartney is a good, was a good coach. No, he wasn't. Mike McCarthy was not a good coach. He had Aaron Rodgers. If Mike McCarthy was a good coach, he would have won more Super Bowls with the greatest quarterback, maybe the history in the history of the NFL. That was the problem is he was just like Jason Garrett, like Jeff Fisher, like John Fox, these old guard by the book, old school risk averse head coaches. That's the problem. Risk aversion. Chandler Reams. Cowboys have never been terrible under Garrett. He's been a stable coach, but he'll never get them over the hump to be a championship team. Time for a change. Agree there. And and to me, like none of that matters. The only thing that matters is the idea that they're on the right path and they're so close. They're not. They're not based on this offense that they insist on running and this style that they insist on playing with. It's not going to work. It's not. How many times do you need to see it not work? And the NFL is co- it's changing constantly. And it's changing more and more away from what they're trying to do. The way the Cowboys are trying to win is not going to win. That's the problem here. And and firing Linehan and bringing in another offensive coordinator doesn't fix that ultimate issue. It all comes down to the one most important question here. Do you have confidence that under Jason Garrett, this team can become a top five scoring offense and a top five passing offense? If the answer is no, then do you envision under Jason Garrett this team becoming a top 10 scoring offense or a top 10 passing offense? If the answer is no, then we're done here. That's that's the problem here. The idea that they're not really built to put up a bunch of points. Well, then build a new team. That is. It's the infuriating part about it. Team TJ, shout, shout. Sorry. I don't mean to yell at you, everybody. I'm not going to cuss. That's inappropriate. That's, if you want cussing, you're going to have to wait till our after-hour show with TJ Carpenter, which comes on at 1 o'clock Central. Barry Griffith, you're right on. Close doesn't cut it. And it's... Our, our offensive scheme is old school, and we need some creative minds. There it is. I mean, it, 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 it's... You know... I just keep hearing this, like, they're so close. They're not. You know, and I want to get into this here in a moment, but kind of some of the, the off-season questions that are going to, to need to be answered. And this this goes into why I think this is the most important off-season for the Cowboys in the last 10 years, because there are a lot of important um, decisions they're going to have to make from a personnel standpoint. And so they are, like, the Cowboys are heading in the right direction from their personnel. They, they've they drafted exceedingly well. They've made a lot of the right decisions in terms of guys to keep and guys to get rid of. Like, they've they've done about as good of a job from a personnel standpoint as you can do. They are, they are, they are close 
from a personnel standpoint, but personnel is only half of it. Personnel is only half of it. In fact, they might even be less than half of it. You need to have the right schemes. And, I mean, you look at, you look at the New Orleans Saints and the Kansas City Chiefs and the Los Angeles Rams. Like, they all have really good running backs, right? So it's not like this idea of, well, they have Zeke, so that's why they need to be a run-first team, right? I mean, all these teams I've just mentioned that are, that are part of the, the best um, offenses and best passing offense in the NFL have good running games. Um, yeah, the, Frederick will be back next year. Sure, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, uh, that's, the, that's the problem that I see is, and this is kind of what I talked about yesterday, the idea that they're close, that a lot of people keep saying they're really close. They're not. They're not close. They're here, and in order for this thing to be successful, it just needs to be here, but they're, they're, they're just going this way. You know, and it looks, if you were to look at a clock and it's like, well, they're at 12 o'clock or they're, they're, at, they're at 2 o'clock and they need to be at 12 o'clock, right? Like, it doesn't look like it's that much of a difference, but it is. It's a significant difference. You keep heading that direction and you're not going to end up there. <laughs> right? <laughs> Chad Cook, we need to remember no was terrible last year. What does it have to do with anything? What does New Orleans being terrible last year literally have to do with anything? This has nothing to do with anything other than like the Cowboys need to have a more uh, a, a more modern offense. That's the problem. The Cowboys need to have a more modern offense. They don't. Passing is more efficient than running, and the Cowboys are like, no, 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 no. We're gonna keep hitting mid range jump shots because that's where we want. We want closer shots. Coach Stiegel says, I'm keeping Garrett simply because this team is so behind him. Think of what the players think of him. And what's what would happen when he's gone? I just want a new OC. But that's the problem here is you're not fixing. Like, I don't think you're fixing the ultimate issue here with the new offensive coordinator. Yes, he's a good motivator. And he does deserve credit for the way that this thing went this season. No, qu- no question about that. No question. He deserves credit. But motivation is only a part of it. Schematics are a huge part of this thing. And it's clear as day that his offense is old. Evolve or die. And they're dying. And the problem is they've had enough success that they think they're close. It's a mirage. They're heading this way. And they need to go this way. And they think they're close because it's only 2 o'clock to 12 o'clock. But it's not that close. It's not. (laughs) TJ Carpenter. Jason, I will infect you with my clap, Garrett. Sam Polson says, need to get a wide receiver and free agent in the offensive line in the draft and get a passing offensive coordinator. Yeah, but I I don't... (laughs) Again, this to me is just, it's a Garrett problem. This is a Garrett issue. Now, maybe I'm wrong, and, and if I'm wrong, that's really good news. But I don't think I'm wrong. I, I don't think that this offense can become what it needs to become, modernize itself, with Jason Garrett as its head coach. They should fire Jason Garrett, but they won't. Now, the other question I'll get is, well, who would you replace him with? And that's not, like, that's not a good enough reason to keep a coach. Like, let's not mistake those two things. Like, well, there's nobody else out there. It's not a good enough reason to still keep a coach. Zach Rosenberg, is Dak the quarterback that will make any OC look good? I mean, it's just year three. He just finished year three. I mean, look, is, did Jared Goff look good? Jared Goff was the number one overall pick in the same draft that Dak Prescott was a fourth-round pick. Did, did Was anybody just enamored with Jared Goff? Like, so much of the evolution. And that's, you know, if you listen to the pre- and post-game show on 105.3 The Fan, that's something Jesse Holly, my co-host, has been saying all season. If you're going to have Dak Prescott be your quarterback— Jason Garrett can't be your head coach. And if Jason Garrett's going to be your head coach, Dak Prescott can't be your quarterback because this offense isn't tailored to fit Dak Prescott. So that's my opening rant. Um, by the way, thumbs up if you think they should fire G- Garrett. Uh, heart emoji if you say no, they shouldn't fire Garrett. Um, I think they should. They won't. There's not a chance in hell they're going to fire Jason Garrett. They're going to fire Linehan. They'll bring in 
it'll make Doug Nussmeyer or somebody else their offensive coordinator, and they'll do the same thing next year. We'll see the same thing. Well, we're not an offense that scores points. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Because the Rams are. And they put 30 on you in the playoffs. In a winner go home game, Rams are like, we're going to hang 30 on you. And even though the Saints only, only put 10 on you, that's a regular season game. Right now we're talking about the postseason and the four highest scoring offenses in the NFL are still in it. But the Cowboys are like, well, we're not a high powered scoring offense. Well, good luck. Uh, Angel Valentin on the Dallas Cowboys report page says teams have people on their payroll that study the upcoming games and learn opposing teams formations. Teams have to change their schemes as the season progresses. Yes. All right. That's my opening rant. Have I, have I made myself clear? If we hear Jerry Jones compare Jason Garrett to Tom Landry one, once more, we're going to gouge our eyes out. Like I'm almost going to do it right now because it's just, it's like, Oh Yeah. They're comparable from a standpoint of that they're both coaches of the Cowboys and they're both even keel, and that's where it stops. But Jerry would have us believe that uh, actually it's important that we keep Jason just for the sake of keeping him because, you know, years accumulated of not winning playoff games consistently is more important than trying to find a new coach that, you know, can get us to where we need to go because the schematics offensively are just not evolved enough for this team to be good enough in the modern era of football. Period. Daniel Mays liked my shirt. R.I.P. Simpsons. It was the best show on TV when it was on TV. But it's long gone. Man, I remember when that show was on TV. That was a really good show, The Simpsons. My favorite show ever when it was on TV. But now it's dead and gone. And it's not on anymore. Uh, Ralph Garcia says, Ari, maybe Jared needs to eat some Pollo Comparo. That'd be a good start. There's one in Arlington that I'll be at on Tuesday. Um, and if you come join me there, you've got a chance to win a $100 gift card to the Dallas Cowboys Pro Shop. So there you go. Um, so, yes. The idea that Jerry thinks the Cowboys should hold on to um, Jason Garrett because, <laughs> you know, uh, Landry didn't win a Super Bowl until year nine, or rather until year 10, and didn't win an NFC title until year nine. It's like, yeah, yeah, you just passed year nine, and he isn't close and that's the problem is the mirage of being close. The Cowboys are close personnel-wise. They aren't even close to being close schematics. And that's the thing is, like, you can have me believe, well, they're zigging when the rest of the league is zagging. The problem is this is now multiple years where we're seeing this. Like, this isn't just once. It's multiple years where it's like, yeah, yeah, they're going to keep this rushing offense that takes a lot of clock and doesn't score a lot of points, and eventually it'll work. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, opening rant brought to you by Pollo Campero, uh, South American, Central American flavors, very unique style. Um, make sure to click the link in the description and join me uh, at Pollo Campero in Arlington on Tuesday, where one person that comes to join me is going to walk away with a $100, 100 bucks to the Dallas Cowboys Pro Shop. You can make win a jersey. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, so Pollo Campero, powering Showtime right here on Phantom, where we bring you to the center of the Dallas sports discussion. Okay, so now's the time where we talk about why this is the most important offseason for the Dallas Cowboys in the last decade. Here is the list of free agents. Now, there's one name that really jumps out at you, obviously. There's a name not on here that's maybe the most important one, which you guys all know. Um, and there's a bunch of other guys that I don't really, like, I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't really care about literally any of these other guys. Now, the other, only guy other than Lawrence that I'm like, uh, maybe, is, is Beasley. The problem is, football is a sport played by young men. I think Beasley, at this point, is probably not as good moving forward as he's already been. Beasley's already played his best football. So when you pay a guy, you can't pay a guy for what they've done. You've got to pay a guy for what they will do. See Des Bryant. Des Bryant, after getting paid... Didn't touch, get even close to the type of production he had previous, previously. Why? Because he got older. You get older, your body starts to break down easier. It, it's, it's, it's simple. That's why it's a sport played by young men. And I just don't... 
I, maybe I'm wrong. I, I just I don't think the money's going to work. I'm not really paying Beasley. I'll go out in the draft. I'll go out in the draft and find somebody. I'll re-sign Tavon on the cheap. Like, I, I'll, I'll be fine with it. Now, look, and I don't want to diminish Beasley. Beasley's a better slot receiver than Tavon Austin. Beasley's a better slot receiver than a lot of guys. He moves very well in, in little spaces. Um, he's, he's, he does have deceptive speed and a great ability to cut. I just can't. There's too many other people I need to pay, too many other premium positions. He's It's too replaceable of a position for me to make a large investment in Cole Beasley. So, I mean, Eric Doxson says we need the sauce, people. Not at, not at whatever price. Like, it's just not a premium position. Three most important positions in football. The quarterback, rushing the quarterback, protecting the quarterback. Those three. Those are what you pay for. Those are what you draft high. Those are the most important positions in football. Then beyond that, you know, you can argue you probably need to pay Amari Cooper, right? Um, Demarcus Lawrence, quarterback, rushing the quarterback, protect the quarterback. Demarcus Lawrence needs to stay. Um, look, my guess is the Cowboys are going to end up franchise tagging Demarcus Lawrence for another season because my guess is Demarcus Lawrence is going to want to be paid as well as Khalil Mack is. The Cowboys are going to say, yeah, you're not as good as Khalil Mack, and, and, and that's where they'll hit a stalemate in their negotiations. Now, hopefully they can reach a long-term agreement, but I'd be – Demarcus Lawrence will be in the Cowboys next year. Whether it's on a franchise tag or a long-term deal, that's that's the difference. The reason that I think this is the most important offseason for the Cowboys in the last decade is because of Dak Prescott. No, not him. Him. What should the Cowboys do with Dak Prescott? And Neil Favre says about to get in a lot of space as well. $30 million coming off the cap, off the books. Yeah, that's right. Romo, all his dead money's gone. Dez, Witten, all this dead money the Cowboys have carried, gone. Poof. Um, but Dak Prescott, what do you do? John Greist says keep him. Yes, agreed. That's, I, that's not what I'm arguing here. What do you do with Dak Prescott? Do you get an extension done this offseason? And and as I've been over, the, the advantage there is you get to space the guaranteed money out over a longer period of time. If, if you can come to a long-term extension for, for, for Dak now, you're, you're going to pay him what he's owed in the final year of his contract, but then you get to space out the signing bonus, which is the guaranteed money, which is the potential dead money, over a longer period of time. Um, meaning... Like you can you can start the clock on the guaranteed money right away. Barry Griffith says definitely would not extend him early. No need to do that. Well, it's interesting because one maybe you get him cheaper than you would, and he's if he's if he's entering a contract year. That's one. And two because again you're gonna get you get to you get to you get to start counting that that uh, guaranteed money. Meaning, let's say he doesn't work out, you're not saddled with all this dead money down the line if you choose to cut him, right? So that that the advantages of of signing Dak to an extension now are maybe you get him on the cheap or cheaper than you'll get him after next year potentially, um, and and you can also take um, you know start taking uh, start the clock on that that guaranteed money which is the golden goose of NFL contracts. Uh, Tim Mariano says Dak did nothing to get paid. Nothing, really. Y'all are that out on Dak. It's bizarre to me. I mean, I, I, I certainly halfway through the year thought no way you can give Dak Prescott an extension. But I, I, I mean, I the growth that I saw from him the final stretch of the season, I, I'm I'm certainly in the camp of try to get an extension done this off season. No, it, it depends. Ronnie Smith, we need another offensive coordinator. We need a head, we need a new head coach. But it's not going to happen. So they'll get a new offensive coordinator who will do more of the same, and then people can blame him for that. People can blame Doug Nussmeyer or the next offensive coordinator for the same issues they're blaming Scott Linehan. But it's all Garrett. Tim Mariano, who'd want him? Dak? Dude, have you... The Vikings paid how many? $85 million or something to Kirk Cousins? Have you seen Kirk Cousins? Kirk Cousins is terrible. Kirk Cousins turns the ball over so much and is not a good quarterback. He's awful. And they gave the Vikings gave him $85 million. You don't think people want Dak Prescott? G. Garcia, I would franchise tag Dak. Hmm. 
so let him play out the final year of his contract next year and then hit the franchise tag the following year. That's what I initially w- w- said I, the Cowboys should do. Draft a quarterback in 2020 and franchise tag Dak that year and then decide what you want to do long term. But I'm more in the long term camp now for Dak than I've, I've ever been. You know, again, we, 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 Sean Moore says he's not going to give us a cheap contract this year. Well, cheap is relative. What I'm saying is perhaps you can get a cheaper deal now than you can next year as he's trying to prove his worth and value. And remember, like, he seems to be on his way up, right? He, we, the way he closed out that season, um, better than he played the entire season. So if he continues that upper trajectory, now, now you're, the cost of, of, of Dak Prescott just got significantly higher. Tim Hill. So basically, we're going to see this Cowboys team repeated every year with no success in the postseason. Basically, yeah. Uh, unless Jason Garrett suddenly decides that, hey, the idea of we're not a scoring offense, we, we need to score, like, unless they completely flip to being like, yeah, maybe we should develop an offense that scores quickly and not be so risk-averse. Um, maybe that would be a good, in, you know, a good way to get further in the playoffs than we've been in, I don't know, 23 years. But... Or, I don't know, you can just kind of putt right around the cup instead of, you know, going for the cup. Just putt around. Just be around. Like, Jason Garrett's 15 feet from the hole, 20 feet from the hole, and he's like, I'm just going to let up a little bit so I don't overshoot it, right? Just the whole, like, I don't want to take chances because if I take chances, something could go wrong. Spike Scott, still not sold, no franchise, too much money, team-friendly three-year contract if possible. Yeah, look, I'm not saying make him the highest paid player in the NFL. I'm saying don't you worry that if you go into this year with him not in a long-term deal that he could vastly outperform what he what he wanted this year and all of a sudden you're looking at, you know, paying him as one of the richest quarterbacks in the NFL. That's that's what I'm trying to protect against. That's the gamble here. That the Cowboys are going the Cowboys have to look at the way that he's progressed in 3 years and then decide if he he will continue to grow and get better. Or if this is his ceiling. I'd venture to guess that he's going to continue to grow and get better. G. Garcia, any Earl Thomas news? Um, yeah, I think he got hurt this year. Um, well, I mean, they're going to they're gonna pay DeMarcus Lawrence. Even if they don't get a long-term deal done with him. I mean, it's if they franchise tag him again. I mean, he was he become the highest paid defensive end in football. <laughs> if they franchise tagged him. So that's what twenty million against the cap. So it's like <laughs> the money just goes <laughs> with one guy. Paul Jackson franchise Dak drafted tight out of the first round. Well, here's the deal: they don't have to franchise him this year, right? He's still under contract for next year. This is this is year three of his four year contract, right? So whereas Zeke in the same draft as a first round pick has that fifth year option. You know, they, they are now, they're, so it's just year three of five years for Zeke. They're going to exercise Zeke's fifth year option and then have two more years of control with Zeke. But they don't have that with Dak. They only have the one more year of control next season. So the question is, do they come to that early extension agreement and one, perhaps get him cheaper than they would next year at the same, you know, with him hitting free agency. And remember, the other, that's the other thing too is you let his deal expire and he hits free agency. Now you're bidding against the whole league. As opposed to, at this point right now, just bidding against him. Uh, Gingerly, is Garrett still coach? Actually, uh, Ginger wrote, is Garrett still couch? He is still a couch. And I'm not being sarcastic. Um, but yeah, I agree with draft a tight end. Um, uh, certainly. And this seems to be a pretty good tight end draft. Um... Corey Miller, so we get one more year. Oof. Is that an oof for Jason Garrett or for 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 Dak Prescott? What's the oof for? Martin and Karina Gutierrez, we'd be a great team with a new couch. It's time. It's kind of fun. It's a Freudian slip. He is a couch. The couchiest couch in the NFC. A couch of a coach. <laughs> um Patrick Prescott says you can trade back to the first. I like Noah Fant. A lot of tight end prospects in this draft. Who who are you trading to get back in the first round? How are you getting back in the first round? Who are you trading? 
Um, Chesney Jones Sr., what's the deal with Williams? And then he told me number 83 because there's a lot of Williams, so I appreciate you doing that. Uh, he go. He's, like David Irving, he has most likely played his last snaps for the Dallas Cowboys. In fact, with Williams, it's probably... Like, I just don't know what Jerry is going to do with David Irving. So I'd like to believe that David Irving's played his last snaps for the Cowboys, but I'm not sure. However, uh, Terrence Williams absolutely has played his last snaps for the Cowboys. And look, I think Gallup at his worst... Michael Gallup at his worst at this point is Terrence Williams. Like, Gallup at his best could be a number one. At his worst, though, he's Terrence Williams, which is fine. Rick Schelker says, I'm from Iowa, and I'll say Hawkinson is way better than Fent. Who's the athlete? That's what I want. I want the athlete. I want the guy over the middle that takes advantage of linebackers because you just can't, you can't defend him. Um, it's the most important offseason for the Cowboys the last decade because of that Dak Prescott question. And because the Cowboys have been really... Like, this is the this is the murkiest part of building a roster. Drafting is important. It's really important. Developing is important. That's really important. But then deciphering who are the guys you need to pay and extend versus who are the guys you let walk. Letting Anthony Hitchens walk. Good move, right? That's the right move. Do not pay for Anthony Hitchens. Don't pay a premium like the Chiefs did for Anthony Hitchens. Good move. Um, but that's that's why it's tough because now the Cowboys are getting to that point in time where they're going to have to make some of these decisions to some of these guys. Um, Scott Frost for OC. You're going to hire a Nebraska's head coach to become the offensive coordinator of the Cowboys? Not not sure that's going to happen. By the way, ne- Nebraska had one of the top recruiting classes in the country this uh, this season, so not going to happen. So yeah, the Cowboys need to make their, the right decision with Dak Prescott, and and I think that decision is to, to find a number that works and get an extension done this off season, which I can't believe if you told me the middle of the season, I would have thought that way at the end of the season, I would have thought you were crazy, but I saw enough from him that says, yeah, I can, I can win with this guy. I don't know. To me, I don't know yet that he can be a Russell Wilson, make everybody else great. Even when, when he's not great kind of guy, but you can win a Super Bowl with him. You can definitely win a Super Bowl with Dak Prescott. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, Miguel Loza the third says, Ari, didn't Jerry say Garrett would have five head coaching options if he was fired by the Cowboys? He did say that. He also he also compared him to Tom Landry. So, I mean, we're going to now all of a sudden take what Jerry says as being logical? Coward is full of bleep. Why? I mean, yes, he is, but why this time? Here's the thing about Colin Coward you all need to know. He like he is going to hate the teams with no following and love the teams with big following. So he'll like the New York Jets. He's already talking about. Oh, I love the Jets. I love the Jets. Like he was all over Mark Sanchez. I remember. I remember years ago, listening to Colin Coward tell me that if he had his pick at any quarterback in the NFL, he would take Mark Sanchez. He said that. He literally said that. Now this is at a time when Mark Sanchez was taking the Jets to AFC title games, but still, he said that. But that's because the Jets have a huge following. They're in a big market. Like he's, Colin Coward is all about getting the big market fans to like him and then everybody else to hate him. Like he hates the Spurs. He hates the Utah Jazz. He hates the Jacksonville Jaguars. Like he, he loves the, he's a front runner guy. He loves Kentucky and Kansas basketball and Duke basketball. He loves the Cowboys and the Lakers. Like that's who he is. Rico gathers for OC. Uh, BJ Bly, Zeke don't stink. Uh, you go find another team. Zeke don't stink. Our line isn't what it was. Zeke to Rams would put up a 400 yard day against us all purpose. Uh, okay. I mean, Zeke's good. Zeke is very good. The offensive line is not as good as it was, but. Zeke still led the league in rushing. What, what are you talking about? Zeke led the league in rushing this year behind that bad offensive line. That behind the Rams' offensive line, he runs for 400 yards. The thing is, <laughs> he'd catch a lot more footballs uh, if he were with the Rams, and maybe more importantly, um, they'd have a different offense that wouldn't run so much. But I get your point. All right, real quick before we transition for TJ Carpenter, who's going to do his thing coming up. Um, 
This is Showtime, where we bring you to the center of the Dallas sports discussion. I'm Ari Temp. You can catch me on 105 through the fan. I also um, host a show every day on Sirius XM, the Big 12 Network, Channel 375. You have Sirius. It's from 7 to 10 a.m. every single morning. Um, who is my pick for new head coach? Lincoln Riley. But that's not going to happen this offseason, probably. But I'd hire Lincoln Riley in a second. Um, Zach Rosenberg says, according to Facebook, I was at the Jets patch divisional round game. It was eight years ago today. Man, how long ago eight years ago was. All right. Um, rumors in, in Dallas, well, Woj tweeted it, so it's, it's probably true, that the Mavs are aggressively shopping Dennis Smith Jr. This is, the Mavericks are building around Luka Doncic, which is the right thing to do. My hope was... They'd find a way to figure out Dennis Smith and Luka Doncic, how they can play together, play off each other. It takes time. It takes a lot of time, multiple seasons. It takes a deference of ego. You have to remove your ego and, and do what's right for the team. And I don't want to put a lot of this on Dennis Smith because I don't really know where this is coming from, but it seems like that's not going to happen, right? Dennis, If Dennis Smith wants to be the man, then that's fine. Go somewhere else. That's, that's just That's the mentality. It's not going to work. Look at the most successful teams in the NBA. There's one man, there's one guy, and then a bunch of other guys that are really good, that are great players, that are that that can be alphas, that are okay, that are okay deferring, that are okay taking less shots, having less minutes, scoring less points. So I would love to see this work between Luca and Dennis Smith Jr., but I don't know that that's going to happen. And. Um, So who should they trade him for? My 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 opinion is if you can get a top ten pick in this upcoming draft for 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 Dennis Smith, that's what I would do. If I had to trade him, I wouldn't trade Dennis Smith. But if I had to trade him, I would go find a top ten pick. That's what I would do. That's what I would do. Because. You know, I heard like Aaron Gordon, like the the Magic are interested. I, just take the Magic's top ten pick. I'd, I'd rather the Magic top ten pick than um, <laughs> than Aaron Gordon. Like, there's there's no player in league. Like, I would just rather go scout the draft. This is a good draft. I mean, look at R.J. Barrett and Zion Williamson and with Duke. I mean, go scout the draft and and go get Don Nelson and and the rest of your scouting department. Find the best guy and then pair him up with Luca. That's what I would do. Or Mark Hoover says, Celtics fan here, trade him for uh, for Jason Tatum. Mark, you'd do Jason Tatum for uh, for Dennis Smith, right? <laughs> Would you do Jason Tatum for Markel Fultz? Oh, God. Philly traded up to draft Markel Fultz. Boston traded down to draft Jason Tatum. Ouch. All right. Thank you all uh, for being a part of this show today and every day right here on Phantom where we bring you to the center of the Dallas sports discussion. Uh, this show doesn't work without you and your participation. So thank you to all the folks that are here every day. Uh, Mark Hoover says, no, I was joking. I mean, of course you're not. Jason Tatum's awesome. And there's probably, like, he's he would be, for the Celtics, as untouchable as Luka Doncic would be for the Mavericks. Um, thank you to Keith Price. Thank you to um, Jason uh, Turner and... Um, Cody Stiegel and Sean Moore and Chris Bennett and Rick Shelker and Angelina Martinez and Joe Tranchina and Chris Bennett and Sean Moore and uh, everybody else who streams this show, who is a part of this show every single day. Michael Lafferty, this show wouldn't exist without you, Tracy Foster, you and your participation. So thank you. A reminder, make plans to join me um, Tuesday, 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 Tuesday at um, Pollo Campero, the location in Arlington, that's where I'm going to be. Come enjoy great food. And by the way, somebody who comes is going to walk away with a $100 gift card to the Dallas Cowboys Pro Shop, courtesy of Phantom. So Tuesday, be there with us. Come enjoy the great food that Pollo Campero offers, South American, Central American cuisine. Um, it's 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 fantastic. I love it. It's It was something that I never had tried before. And when I went in there and tried it, I saw just the unique flavors, um, you know, styles. You don't normally go to a restaurant and see plantains as a side dish, uh, but they have them. So um, go check it out. Again, um, uh, Pollo Campero in Arlington on Tuesday, and you can win a $100 gift card to the Dallas Cowboys Pro Shop. Other than that, everybody, 
for now. TJ Carpenter is coming up next. Uh, so make sure to stay tuned for the TJ Carpenter experience. But for now, I'm out. Peace out, everybody.